we're never going to stop exploring the unknown in air and space. The launch of NASA's Voyager probes was the start of a historic trip between stars. It showed that we can keep an eye on not only Earth, but also our solar system and beyond. Scientists are still learning new things about space from these amazing spaceships that were launched 45 years ago. These amazing robots are still the best at exploring space, even though they have 3 million times less memory than a normal smartphone and internet speeds 38,000 times slower than 5G. In a shocking turn of events, the Voyagers have now found something that can't be found. What do they have going on now? What will the Voyager probe come across? Let us find out. The Titan III-E Centaur rocket sent Voyager 1 into space from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on September 5, 1977. This was the start of an amazing trip. After only 15 days, on August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 did the same thing, starting a twin journey into the universe. Their main job was to study Jupiter, Saturn, and the moons that circle these gas giants in the solar system. But these brave explorers went way beyond their original goals and started a trip that would take them to the farthest reaches of our neighborhood in space. During their long journey, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 broke many records. They have been around longer than any other ship ever made, and they have traveled farther from Earth than any other man-made thing. In fact, they have gone into interstellar space, which makes them the first things made by humans to do so. Their trip into interstellar space, past the sun's influence and into the galaxy's uncharted area, has given scientists a lot of useful information. More than 12 billion miles from Earth, these interstellar probes are still surprising scientists with what they find. The new, impossible discovery is one of those things that scientists could never have imagined. We will talk about it in more depth later. There is no doubt that the Voyager twin probes have done amazing things. When they first saw Jupiter's and Saturn's moons more than 40 years ago, they surprised experts and went against what they thought they knew about these faraway worlds. Astronomers used to think that these moons would be as quiet and full of craters as our own moon, but they turned out to be full of geological action. During its journey, Voyager 2 in particular reached a number of important benchmarks. In 1986, it was the first spacecraft to fly by Uranus. Three years later, it was the first spacecraft to fly by Neptune. As of now, it is still the only ship that has gone down that path. NASA has taken a number of steps to make the spaceships last longer, while they are still on their amazing journey. Over the past three years, heaters and parts that aren't needed have been turned off to save energy. This has allowed them to keep working well into the next decade, with 2030 being the expected end date of the mission. The end of the Voyager missions is both a sad and happy time for the scientists and engineers who have been a part of this amazing trip from the beginning. Because they were dedicated and worked hard, the project turned out much better than they thought it would. The data that the Voyagers sent back has led to many important science discoveries, and has inspired many generations of scientists and space fans. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were not like other spaceships. A lot of thought went into making them stable platforms, and their turning speed is more than 15 times slower than an hour hand. This design kept things from getting too blurry while the spaceship took pictures and data as it hurtled through space. Scientists and the public were amazed by their amazing imaging skills long before they met planets in other solar systems. The satellite began sending pictures of Jupiter even though it was still a few months away. People at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory were thrilled by these early pictures of the gas giant's moving clouds and famous Great Red Spot. But it wasn't until Earth's moon Io was found to have active volcanoes that the Voyagers were able to make such important findings. It turned out that Io, which is a little bigger than Earth's moon, has the most volcanoes of any body in the solar system. The equipment on board the spacecraft picked up strange signals from Io, which were backed up by the clear pictures they took. These pictures showed huge plumes of ash from volcanoes and a surface that was marked by the release of volcanic material. One of Io's most famous volcanoes, Pele, has exploded 30 times higher than Mount Everest, forming a crater that is almost the size of France. 
Over 33,000 pictures were taken by the Voyager probe of Jupiter and its moons. These pictures show how beautiful Jupiter is and how different the moonscapes are in the Jupiter system. Since they were launched, the twin Voyagers have been making amazing findings. The most recent one was an impossible find. The discovery of Jupiter's rings was one of the most surprising ones. These weak rings were a surprise and made the gas giant even more interesting. Voyager 2 also showed that Europa, one of Jupiter's 53 named moons, had an icy shell that was thought to be over 60 miles thick. These results called into question what people thought they knew about the nature of these faraway celestial bodies and led to more research into whether icy moons could support life. Although the Voyagers were leaving Jupiter, they got a gravity boost that pushed them towards Saturn as a farewell kick. They would not have been able to get away from the sun's gravity and go further into space without this important boost. Soon, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 split up and went their different ways, each going to new areas of space. Voyager 1 was close to Saturn's moon Titan, which has an orange, hazy atmosphere. Scientists became interested in this moon's secrets, which led to more research into its complicated chemistry. Then, Voyager 1 turned north, leaving the plane of the planets behind, and it began its trip beyond our solar system. Voyager 2, on the other hand, went on a series of adventures that took it to the furthest worlds from the sun. It made a historic flyby of Uranus in 1986 and found 10 moons that had not been known before. This brought the total number of moons around Uranus to 32. Voyager 2 finally got to Neptune three years later, showing us some amazing things about this faraway ice giant. Voyager 2 saw wind speeds of up to 1,000 miles per hour when it passed close to Neptune. This was the fastest wind ever seen on a planet in our solar system. As the probe got within 2,980 miles of Neptune's methane-filled blue atmosphere, it gave scientists new information about this very faraway world. It was discovered that Triton, Neptune's biggest moon, is one of the coldest places in the solar system. At minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 235 degrees Celsius, the surface of Triton is very cold. Triton had some other traits that made it stand out, like ice volcanoes that threw nitrogen gas and icy particles five miles into the thin atmosphere. These finds helped us learn more about the variety and complexity of the planets and moons in our solar system, even those that are very far away. One person who was very important in making the projects go beyond their original goals was the famous astronomer Carl Sagan. As a member of the Voyager mission's imaging team, he fought hard for taking one last set of pictures before both spacecraft's cameras were turned off. These pictures would be a gift to all people, one last look at Earth from the farthest reaches of space. Sagan didn't give up, and it paid off. On February 14th, Voyager 1 turned its camera back towards the sun in 1990 and took 60 pictures of the inner solar system. The most famous of them, called the Pale Blue Dot, will always remind us of our place in the universe. It is the farthest picture ever taken of Earth. It was taken from 3.8 billion miles away. In the vastness of space, Earth looks like a tiny pale blue dot that is hard to tell apart. The Voyager mission is an amazing story of being strong and lasting a long time. It reads like a superhero comic from the future. They're still out there, sending us useful information from the farthest parts of our galaxy, even after 40 years. Let's talk about their old eight-track tape setup now. Yes, you read that right. In the 1970s, eight-track tapes were all the rage, and the Voyager ships still use them. These reliable tapes have been used for a long time, which shows how smart the people who made the project were. You might ask, why eight-track tapes? In the early days of space travel, there wasn't much digital storage like there is now. So they needed a way to store data that would work and last. And those eight-track tapes were perfect. They're like the workhorses of the cosmic age that can't be broken. Even more amazing is that the information on these tapes isn't just random songs. It's important science information about the planets, moons, and space between the stars. Okay, these tapes really do help us understand some of the biggest questions in the world. When you think about how long something will last, consider this. The Voyager ships are exposed to very high and very low temperatures, cosmic radiation, and the vacuum of space. 
Even so, these old travelers keep going. If you send your grandparents on a walk through Antarctica, they will not only make it, but they will also live. One important method used on the Voyager missions was called gravity assist maneuvers. They played a brilliant role in these legendary missions between stars. Think about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 as two brave spaceships that are about to set out on an audacious mission to explore the farthest parts of our solar system. They needed a boost, something more than what their own propulsion systems could give them, in order to get to these faraway places and collect useful data. This is where gravity helps, and it works a bit like a dance in space. Instead of just using their engines, these spaceships danced with some of the largest planets in our solar system, using their huge gravitational pull to lift themselves off the ground and send them flying. By doing this smart move, they were able to save valuable gas and speed up, which they needed to reach more places on their grand tour. To begin, let us look at the basics. With gravity help, also called a gravitational slingshot, some of the planet's momentum is sent to the spacecraft as it goes by. Picture Voyager 1 getting closer to Jupiter, a huge gas giant with a strong gravity pull. Voyager 1 flew by Jupiter at just the right angle and speed, which was only possible with the help of the smartest people at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Earth's ship moved faster because Jupiter's gravity pulled on it. As if from space, it gave Voyager 1 the extra push it needed. But this move is done in a certain way. The slingshot could have been a cosmic disaster that sent Voyager 1 off track if it had come close to Jupiter at the wrong angle or speed. It's hard to imagine how precise it has to be. Still, the scientists and engineers who worked on this dance of space got it right more than once. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 went on an amazing trip through the solar system with the help of these gravity aids. To get to Uranus and Neptune, Voyager 2 used the pull of Jupiter and Saturn to help it. The Grand Tour would not have been possible without these dances in the sky. They were very important to the Voyager trips and would not have been the same without them. Because of how well these gravity aids worked, Voyager 1 was able to reach interstellar space and Voyager 2 quickly followed suit. Gravity aids are based on a simple idea, but they are incredibly hard to put into practice. The Grand Tour on Voyager 2 needed a lot of accuracy. If they had missed any of these slingshots, the plan might not have worked. But the people who led these missions were determined and never gave up on their quest for information. The gravity assist maneuvers helped the Voyager missions find their way through space, but they would have been nothing more than space fantasies without the Deep Space Network, DSN. Imagine it as the phone line between stars that kept us in touch with our brave Voyager probes as they went out into the unknown. What does the Deep Space Network really mean? It's not as cool as a spaceship, but it's just as important. The DSN is a group of very large radio antennas that are placed carefully in different parts of the world, such as Australia, California, and Spain. With diameters ranging from 26 meters to a whopping 70 meters, these huge dishes are like cosmic megaphones that let us talk to spacecraft traveling beyond our world. Allow us to now talk about what part it played in the Voyager missions. With their cameras, sensors, and other equipment, the Voyager probes were like our eyes and ears in space. We needed a strong way to talk to them so we could understand the data they sent back and give them new orders. The DSN filled that need. Think about this. Voyager 1 sends a message back to Earth as it heads to the edge of the solar system. The signal is very weak and moving at the speed of light. It gets weaker as it moves through the vastness of space. When it gets to Earth, it's hardly a sound but the huge sensors on the DSN are ready to pick up that whisper. They pick up Voyager's weak signal and boost it, changing it into information that scientists can use. Not only does the DSN receive messages, it also sends them. Missions like Voyager change over time. Scientists and engineers need to change their plans, send the spacecraft in a different direction, or make changes to their tools. They tell the DSN what to do, and it beams them into space to Voyager. Earth and the farthest man-made things in the universe can talk back and forth. One interesting thing about the DSN is that it works all the time, looking for signs from far away. Keeping us in touch with our spaceships, even though they're billions of miles away, is like keeping an eye on the whole universe. The Voyager trips show how powerful it is to work together and come up with new ideas. 
The DSN made sure that the spaceships were never really alone while they were on their amazing trips. It connected Earth to the rest of the universe and let us explore the outer worlds and go into space between the stars. The Deep Space Network is more than just a bunch of receivers. It's our link to the rest of the universe. It makes sure that the Voyager mission's stories will keep being told, even as the spaceship travels beyond our solar system and into the unknown space between the stars. So what is the heliopause? And what fascinating find out? What did Voyager 2 find there? The heliopause was one of the most important obstacles the Voyager probes had to cross on their way between the stars. It's the line that separates the impact of our sun from the vast space between the stars. There were a lot of different guesses and theories about where this border actually was. At first, scientists thought it might be as close as Jupiter, but later studies helped us understand it better. The heliopause was thought to be between 116 and 177 astronomical units, AU, by scientist Bill Gurney in 1993. The distance between the Earth and the Sun is about 93 million miles, which gives you an idea of how far this is. Voyager 1 reached the heliopause about 20 years later and saw the expected rise in plasma density, which proved Gurney's predictions to be very correct. But it raised an interesting question. When Voyager 1 got to the heliopause, it saw that the density of the plasma increased, but that the direction of the magnetic field in the spacecraft did not change significantly. This was a surprise because there should have been a clear difference if the spaceship had gone from a place where the magnetic field came from the sun to a place where it came from other stars. Voyager 2 added to the mystery when it hit the heliopause 120 AU from Earth, the same distance as its twin. However, it did not notice any changes in the magnetic field. These unexpected findings made it hard for theoretical models to predict how the heliosphere would behave and how it would interact with the environment between the stars. The heliosphere was supposed to change along with the sun's 11-year cycle, but the Voyager's readings didn't show this to be the case. Voyager 2 reached the heliopause when the solar wind was at its strongest. The solar wind goes up and down with the sun's cycle. It was thought that the heliopause would be farther away than 120 AU, which added another level of difficulty. Still, the Voyager's results have helped improve theoretical models in important ways. Scientists now think that our sun has changed from a hot, charged area to a part of our galaxy that is only partly charged. This change was probably caused by nearby supernovae, which are superheated stars that burst at the end of their lives and took electrons away from atoms nearby. With rough waves and a mix of magnetic fields, the line between these areas is like the coast. The level of turbulence can change, but the Voyager's observations have shown that there are only small changes near the heliopause and no changes at all on bigger scales. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are like time machines that have never aged. They are still traveling through deep space by themselves, leaving behind the planets and moons they used to call home. What will happen next for these never-ending travelers? It's a cosmic guessing game, but here are some ideas to think about. Now, these probes are going in different directions. Voyager 1 is speeding towards the constellation Ophiuchus, and Voyager 2 is moving towards the constellation Cetus, even though it sounds like they're going to die in space in 2030, as some scientists have said will happen. Even so, it's still possible that they'll live longer than us by millions of years. They might meet other star systems one day and bring a word from a long-lost Earth with them. Imagine that an alien race finds these old examples of human creativity while bringing the golden record, which is a record of our lives. They could find out a lot of secrets. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and share if you like this.